Hello everybody, I'm George from Ireland. So um, this is a video about the um, Arab abandonment, abandonment of Palestine. I'm not talking about all Arab countries. There are almost 30 countries in the League of Arab States. Um, but uh, I'm talking particularly now about the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain, which um, have both doing nothing to advance uh, the cause of, of Palestinian freedom, and they have recognized Israel. Now, recognizing, uh, recognizing Israel's not a bad thing to do. I think sovereign states should. Likewise, every sovereign state should recognize Palestine, and some have, including uh, some of those which have also recognized um, Israel. So Palestine is a nation by, by any definition. Um, Palestine existed on the territory of what's now the state of Israel, still exists uh, in, in, in Gaza and in the West Bank. Most of the West Bank is, of course, under illegal Israeli military occupation, has been since uh, 1967. So Palestine, the word's been around uh, for millennia. You'll see mentioned, here mentioned the Philistines uh, in the Bible. It's Philistine in, in, in Arabic. Um, so when did it become a nation? That's debatable. Um, so um, no nation um, is natural. They're all man-made. There are different degrees of artificiality. Nations come into being very gradually or quite suddenly, as um, in the case of Israel, perhaps it was recreated in Israel's case in 1948. So they come in all shapes and sizes. And this is one of the central paradoxes of nationness, that um, they're all unique, and yet everybody seems to have a nationality. People can have more than one. Um, so uh, some claim that Palestine is not a nation um, because m most of those Palestinian stock are in Jordan. Um, but, uh, you know, there are more Jews in the United States than in Israel, but that doesn't mean that Israel is not a nation or that the United States is the homeland of, of the Jews. Now, I know Zionists will say, yes, but it, um, Palestinians form the majority of the, the Jordanian population, which, which is probably true, but that doesn't mean that Palestine is not a nation unless it could, could, could wish to unite with Jordan or Jordan become part of Palestine or whatever. I mean, Jews have formed the majority in other places as well not recognized as nation states, but even this day, Brid de Bojan, there's a um, Russian region in the, the Russian Far East, or there are various um, cities and so on in Europe in the old days, or sections of cities where Jews comprise the, comprise the majority of the people. Zionists will often say, oh, these Palestinians, Palestinians they were, already came from Jordan anyway. So, well, if that was part of Palestine, well, then that that's, that's just means that, that Palestine is bigger than we originally thought. So Palestine is a nation, and yes, they share a few things in common with the uh, Israel, with other Arabs, like the language. That doesn't mean they're not a nation. The United States is not a unique nation, a unique language, but nobody would dispute that they are a nation. Um, so, yeah, nations share points of uh, uh, brotherhood with, with, with uh, um, other nations, but that doesn't mean a nation doesn't exist. And I know it's a notoriously thorny issue to... Um, to define nationality, it defies any um, easy uh, set of criteria to say what exactly qualifies um, a group of people as a nation. So Bahrain and the United uh, Arab Emirates, they have formed diplomatic relations with Israel. So Jared Kushner, President Trump's son-in-law and envoy to the Middle East has pulled off a diplomatic coup. Admittedly, he was kind of lucky in the timing. This has been building for some years, and it's really about facing off against Iran. So the um, Sunni Arab states versus Iran, which is the uh, primary Shia nation in the world. In case you don't know, Muslims are divided into two major denominations. The Sunni, who are up to 80% of the population, the Shia, who are about 20% of the population. Now, these are subdivided into various um, sects within Sunniism and Shiaism. Now, not all Shias hate all Sunni or vice versa, but some do on either side. So there's there's a Sunni minority in Iran. So far as I know, they're, they're decently treated. Likewise, the Christian minority and indeed the tiny Jewish minority. And they always have a representative by law in the Iranian majlis as in parliament. Um, whereas um, uh, non-Muslims in, in, in Saudi Arabia are treated abominably. Even Muslim Sunni Muslims are often uh, working in conditions of semi-slavery. Um, but that wouldn't trouble the conscience of the United States or Israel one whit. Um, so Bahrain is actually a Shia majority country, but the, Shia, the, the, the Sunni minority have lorded it over the majority for uh, centuries. It's closely aligned to Saudi Arabia. There's a causeway there, been there since the late 80s, I've been, been across it. And indeed, when the uh, um, Bahraini king wanted to clamp down on peaceful protests, he called in the Saudi Arabian army to, to assist him.
So it's little more than an adjunct of Saudi Arabia. But surprising, they split with the Saudis on this one. But perhaps the Saudis aren't far behind. There have been Saudi diplomatic contacts with the Israelis for a while because um, the, the Palestinian cause appears to be a forlorn hope. You know, the Palestinians, they um, are living in a sort of open air prison. They um, are poverty stricken. They've got no natural resources. So they're supposedly internally independent, but Israel controls their, most of their land borders. Only one crossing to Egypt, the Palestinians control. The Israelis control their air, the Palestinian airspace. The Israelis control that small um, bit of the sea, which is adjacent to Palestine. Israel can cut off water, gas, electricity any time. Now, when they let the, the Palestinians have the means of life, they say they're generous. But if the, if the Palestinians fight in their own defense, it's all cut off. Um, so um, over the past um, 50 odd years, tens of thousands of, of Palestinian civilians have been killed by the Israeli defense forces. And I, I mean tens of thousands. I'm not exaggerating. Um, and uh, certainly it, it, out of American politicians, there's rarely a whit of protest. Now, I know that Israel is not the most hideous regime in the Middle East by a long shot. OK, so I, I give them that there are worse. You could look at Syria, you could look at Saddam Hussein and so on. And I'm not suggesting that most Palestinians are good or that most Israelis are bad. It can be good and bad in any nationality. And there's some Israelis who are morally courageous, who recognize that their behavior, that their government's behavior is often been appalling. It takes real guts to recognize that. Or indeed, Palestinians who recognize that those who are fighting on their cause have sometimes been dreadful and deliberately target civilians. Palestinian has, Palestine has often been failed by really substandard um, and uh, morally uh, decrepit leaders. Um, so um, the, the Zionists, they quite often call Palestine, Judea and Samaria, talking, talking about disputed rather than illegally occupied. The United Nations in 1967 voted that Israel must immediately withdraw from the illegally occupied territories. They haven't done for over 50, 50 years. Israel's been illegally occupying the Golan Heights from Syria for decades. Likewise, some um, farms in southern Lebanon. So who's aggressive there? One country is occupying the land of three of its neighbors. Um, the the um, Palestinians fighting for mere self-preservation. Now, civilians should never be dis dis targeted. That's obviously immoral. But uh, uh, Israel has done this on many, many occasions. Weapons are provided for Israel uh, by, for free by the United States government, which gives it um, diplomatic cover. American politicians from Hillary Clinton down have so often advocated and defended crimes against humanity. She's a lawyer. If she's if there was another Nuremberg, she would be up there. I know other governments, the Russian government, many governments um, uh, deliberately commit uh, uh, crimes against humanity. But the United States government is not innocent, and it hasn't happened just once or twice. It's endemic. It's persistent. It's happened. Um, for, since the 60s at least, um, knowingly being an accessory to murder again and again. And then anyone who raises their voice against this will be routinely denounced as an anti-Semite. Now, some of those who uh, speak up for uh, the liberation of Palestine are anti-Semites. And obviously anti-Semitism is despicable. And let's remind ourselves what anti-Semitism is. A Semite, a descendant of, of Shem, uh, is an Arab or a Jew. So I uh, despise both forms of anti-Semitism, anti-Arab bigotry or anti-Jewish bigotry. No one should be mistreated for his or her ethnicity or faith. Um, anyway, a lot of these Zionists trying to say that Islam is so evil, when of course Islam and Judaism overlap to a very great extent. One lot say Shalom, the other say Salam. One lot say Amen, the other say Amin. Um, and indeed Christianity, um, this is perhaps the narcissism of small distances, small differences. These monotheisms, these mosaic faiths, they share so much in common, and yet they've sometimes been at loggerheads. So um, um, surely armed resistance to uh, unlawful occupation when all other peaceful means of redress have failed uh, to meet with even the, the least modicum of justice um, is not a terrorism. As I say, Palestine is a nation by any definition. It has an elected government for decades. It was the only fully democratic country in the Arab world, yet it was often not recognized by the US government, which far preferred to um, uh, deal with mass scale torturing tyrannies, which they found much more amenable and a good customer for armaments. Um, anyway, there's been land grabbing by uh, Israel, there's been home stealing and so on. 
uh, not one shekel of compensation paid to those who had their land sequestered. Likewise, Arab states often treated their Jewish citizens terribly. Um, Jewish people were driven out of Morocco, um, out of Egypt, out of Iraq, various other places, and that is, of course, utterly reprehensible. So Jews who are driven out of, of, of their homes, Palestinians who are driven out of their homes, they should all get an apology, they should all get ample con con compensation, they should be offered restitution of their former citizenship. So um, even those with even the uh, most tenuous claim to, to, to Jewishness, with not even the slenderest knowledge of the Judaic faith, um, can get citizenship more or less instantaneously in Israel without even having to pass a Hebrew language test. And that's the so-called right of return. But no right of return for those who actually come from there, from uh, um, Palestinian octogenarians um, driven out in, 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 in the 40s or um, people who are just beyond middle age driven out in the 60s and inf infants, they aren't allowed back and they don't get any compensation. They can't land, dwell in the land of their ancestors and ancestresses, even something which is documented as their homeland. And that is obviously a screaming injustice. So uh, these are the causes of the conflict. Um, this is the kind of thing that you'll never hear in political discourse in the United States, where um, speaking up for decency towards the Palestinians is the third rail of politics. You touch that and you're dead. You'll just be you'll just be fried uh, by the Zionist media, not the Jewish media. Most Zionists are not Jewish. Not all Jewish people are Zionists. So there should, let there be no um, anti-Jewish uh, bigotry. I'm not saying there's a conspiracy of Zionists to control the media as such. Yeah, Zionists want to put out their message and they're very effective at that. But they don't have a corporate view on gun rights or basketball or climate change or anything else only about Israel. And they're obviously highly effective at getting their message across. And I know Israel sometimes gets an unfair press, not in the United States, um, elsewhere. Um, anyway, so that, that's just a brief lowdown about uh, what's happened with regards to Palestine. And in return for, for, for recognizing um, uh, Israel, the, they haven't got anything, really. The, the um, UAE and Bahrain, Israel's agreed to suspend its illegal annexation of this land, some of the stolen land they're now claiming is legally theirs for decades. Even Israel didn't claim that it rightfully belonged to them. They moved settlers as in illegal immigrants into Palestinian land. Now, I think their squatters to rights, illegal immigrants should be eventually forgiven, and Israelis are no exceptions. Um, but there were Jewish-only roads in the illegally occupied territory. That's outrageous. How racist is that? Imagine having white-only roads in the United States unacceptable, morally repugnant. So why on earth should there be Jewish on only roads um, in, in, in Palestine? It would just be bad to have Gentile only roads. Outrageous. Who would want such a thing? The very idea is uh, sickening. Um, and obviously the United States is so often advocated for that, facilitated for that, given diplomatic cover. So um, abetted uh, these uh, gross abuses of the Palestinians, which have persisted for decades. If you want to know why people hate America, it's that. I don't hate the United States, but some people do. So uh, U.S. policy has sometimes been uh, grossly unjust and just um, uh, indefensible. Israel has a right to defend herself. Palestine has a right to defend herself. Which one is under illegal occupation? That's the one that's acting in defense. If you're illegally occupying another nation's uh, sovereign uh, soil, then you are acting offensively and not defensively. So uh, we, we ought to remind ourselves who is occupying whom. Stop all this uh, victim blaming. But anyway, the um, Sunni um, Arab dictatorships are squaring off against uh, Iran for all its, Iran's faults. It uh, certainly wins the beauty contest against Saudi Arabia. Iran, where women have been allowed to vote for decades, where women have been allowed to drive for decades, women are allowed to play for sports since the late 90s. No, I don't like the Iranian regime either, but it's not as bad as Saudi Arabia by a long shot or others. I'm not anti-Saudi Arabian. I'm very much anti their government. I would like liberty for the Saudi Arabian people. Now, Riyadh has not yet recognized Tel Aviv. It might be too much for many, many Saudi Arabians. They couldn't stomach it just yet, recognizing what for decades they called the Zionist entity. They wouldn't even dignify with a name, just as um, some Zionists would even call Palestine by, by its proper name. So that's my penny worth. If you like what you saw, please help me um, continue. I really need donations to uh, PayPal, georgecallahan79 at gmail.com. Callahan spelled C-A-L-L-A-G-H-A-N. That's all small letters. Thank you. Toodaloo.